Hello Switch Watchers, how you doing? It's Jordan here with a review of Empire of Angels 4. Now I know many of you out there are wondering what on earth the Empire of Angels series is. You've never heard of it before, and yet here we are on the fourth entry. Well don't you worry, because I'm here to not clear it up at all. I've never heard of it either. But let's get through this together. These are strategy RPGs first beginning in 1993 in Asia on computers. The fourth entry is actually the first on consoles. Apparently these were semi-popular in the region at the time, and although I do love a good strategy RPG, I may have not looked twice at this had PlayAsia not got this as a physical exclusive release, so that kind of always gets my attention. So you'll be delighted to hear that there's no need for prior knowledge of the series before jumping into this world of anime babes, because yes, this is a world without men. Every single person in this world is female and extremely hot at that. But before all you dirty dogs hit that buy button, stick around because I'm going to tell you if it's actually good or not. The story starts simply. Aside from the opening scroll which states made up name after made up word, the only thing stopping your eyes glazing over is the eye candy of the well made artwork. After some terrible wars, a terrible disease has spread making people turn feral and you are part of a squad that has to investigate it. You'll stumble across a mysterious power that may turn the tide in your favour and perhaps maybe even save the world. I have to admit that the story started strongly for me, but after about 10 hours or so, uh, my eyes just kind of started to glaze over and I just wanted to get to the gameplay. But it was fun seeing which new girls I would meet along the way. I wonder why that is. The game is set up fairly linearly. You move from story to battle rather swiftly. Battles take place in a nice variety of locations and you're tasked with victory over the enemy forces. We've all played these types of games before. You move your characters on a grid, do your attack or special move for all of them, and then it's the enemy's turn. I don't know what it is these days, but this simpler form of me first thing you approach to tactics games is far less interesting than the speed based nature ones. Can anyone think of a recent tactics game that goes with the old Final Fantasy tactics approach? I miss that style. Far risky and strategic, I miss it. Anyways, you have a small pool of job classes within your team, swords, bows, magic, and there's kind of a triangle in effectiveness, but there's not too much tactical prowess needed to be shown here as it's fairly straightforward. There's no height difference, there's no terrain difference, no team up attacks or support. It is back to basic stuff, but rather enjoyable. I do like that you often have multiple goals for victories, one harder than the other, like the easy one maybe just to reach a certain point of the map, while the harder one maybe to wipe out the enemy forces. You can also get bonuses for achieving certain requirements within those goals, such as doing it without losing a party member or do it within a certain number of turns. I like these multiple goals and rewards. Now I am not a perfectionist in most aspects of my life, as you, I'm sure you'll agree if you've watched a couple of my videos, I'm more of a effort that I'll do kind of guy. But when it comes to strategy games with these type of goals, oh man, I need to get the highest rank first time. But let me tell you, that's not an easy task here. Sure, doing the bare minimum to win isn't too taxing until later in the game, but doing the full checklist the first time around is quite difficult. You'll earn cash by doing so, which only goes towards the job class upgrades. As you get further in the game, there's like a tree job system where your unit can upgrade to one of two new classes at a time. While there are only three base jobs, there are plenty of variety in the long term, and most characters have their own ultimate job class, as it were, right at the end. All in all, despite the back to basics nature of it, I was wholly surprised at how much the gameplay grabbed me here. I do like the genre, but I can be quite picky about which ones grab me or not. Well, this one did. Simple, yes, but fun and charming and had enough variety in mission goals and a perfect challenge curve that really had me. It's not the best out there for sure, but I was surprised at how much it got me. You've probably already seen by now that the game reeks of being a budget title. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, if you're open to it. Visually, it's incredibly colourful, but I know that the chibi characters contrasting with the story portraits won't gel with everyone. And I admit it is overly cutesy, but that does allow some great comedy reactions from the characters. There were some hilarious attack animations that I wish there were more of. The chibi art style conveys the silliness of the game rather well, which I don't think they could have done with a more grounded art style. Although there is truly cursed imagery here, when the chibi girl if they get wiped out in battle or when they upgrade their class, that's not gonna go away from my head for a while. 
Also, did I mention the character designs are incredible? I'm a big fan of all the hand-drawn artwork here. It almost feels kind of too good for the game at hand. I'm not really sure what it is about them. Really love their designs, so big respect to the artist or artists. I was always interested in seeing which new characters would appear in the next stage or chapter. The audio too, while mostly nicely composed, is a bit rough in their transition, with seemingly little thought put into the constant switching between tracks of the drop of a hat. Usually horrifically contrasting too, but some of the music is pretty nice, although a handful of tracks are probably better on their own than in the context of the game. If you like the soundtrack, then you can get a hold of it via a limited collector's edition of the Switch Physical, which is exclusive to Play Asia. There's a standard edition too, but that doesn't get the CD. With the collector's edition, you also get a nice box and certificate to go with it. I've already pre-ordered mine, as I do want a full Play Asia exclusive set. If you want to pick it up, have a physical version to hold and keep forever that actually has some value, then links are below in the description and the pinned comment for both. Don't hang around though, they tend to sell out rather quickly. And of course, like all Play Asia exclusives, it does have English. If you use our links in the description, then it also helps support the Switch Watch team out at the same time. Massively so. Plus, in return, as always from Play Asia, you can get a swell 5% off any physical item if you use our coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out on Play Asia for 5% off any physical item. Or if you don't want to own it physically, it is available digitally if you're one of those people. You can grab it for 20 bucks or euros and I believe there's a 10% launch discount going on. And for the book per hour ratio, that's pretty okay. So when this was first announced and I talked about the physical pre-order a few moons back during my weekly video series on physical releases, a lot of people, okay it was like one person, said that the original English translation was hilariously bad, like they'd obviously use Baidu Translate to get the English. Well for these new console ports, East Asia Soft got in on the action to put in some quality control in that aspect and while this is hardly localization of the century, it is workable, but I guess the source material was hardly Taiwanese Shakespeare to begin with. Yes, it's budgeted, yes, it's quite simple, but it does have a lot of charm to it. I love the Dreamcast with all my heart, and I could 100% see this as being a Dreamcast take on Fire Emblem back in the day. And yes, I'm well aware of Sakura Wars, and yes, I'm well aware of how the West was not deemed cultured enough to stomach it. But yeah, I am a sucker for these kind of games, and you know me by now, if something reminds me of the Dreamcast, well, I'm probably going to be nicer about it than most. But you know, there is merit here. If you want to lay back, have some simple enough tactical RPG-ness, that you don't need to think too much, where the only time you get a sweat on is when the anime ladies are on screen, and you're hoping your wife isn't watching you. Sorry, I mean, when you want to do each battle perfectly. It's Tactics Light, but yeah, it's a very nice palate cleanser after I just decapitated a thousand ninjas in my Ninja Gaiden review. Yeah, I'm attacking people here, but the girls are more likely to lose their clothes than their limbs. Overall, hardcore tactics aficionados will probably find something to say about this game. Uh, this is for those who want a simpler take on the genre, more accessible with cute girls as the main characters, no fluff. I went in not expecting a whole lot, and to be fair, I was expecting mobile crap, but actually, I was pleasantly surprised without being too, like, overly enthusiastic about it. If you want some cute waifus and get some solid gameplay to go with it, which to be fair, is an achievement in itself, those two tend not to go together well. Then go right ahead and pick this up either digitally or physically via Play Asia with the links below. It is difficult to know where to score this, but I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. A 7 out of 10. Yes, I'm rather surprised myself. Alright, many thanks for watching. Big up to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumo, Ganica, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, Alexander Cato, J Cross7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Michael Del Polito, Cigar Trucker, Cartoon Soren, and Jack Severus. Thank you for your wonderful and amazing support. Plus you, yes, you watching right now. If you watch all the way through, you are a legend of the highest order. The longer you watch, the more YouTube likes us and lets us grow. So if you're one of those people, I want to know who you are. Give me an angel in emoji in the comments, there must be an angel emoji, I've seen far too many on Facebook. Here's to some of our other stuff, bargains on Sunday, physical Switch games on Monday, and reviews like this one. Also, Legend of Mana Review, watch it.